Hey folks, uh, Mr. Math Blog here, and this is uh, a lesson on generating equivalent fractions. Okay, and so the common core strand is um, uh, we're going to use uh, this uh, multiplication to find equivalent fractions, and you can't see it down there. I don't know why. I'm at school right now, so this says down here lesson 6.3, 6 uh, 6 I believe, or 6.2, sorry, lesson 6.2. Alrighty? Okay, so uh, let's see. 6-2 or 6-3, I don't know. I can't see underneath that. Anyway, so Stacy uh, needs, I think it's 6-2. Uh, Stacy needs three-fourths of a cup of milk uh, to make uh, muffins. Her measuring cup is divided into eighths, though, not fourths. So what fraction of the measuring cup does Stacy need to uh, fill it with milk? Okay, so what I'm going to do is, um, uh, well, let's first talk about this. Is an eighth size part of a measuring cup bigger or smaller than a fourth size cup part? Well, I think this will explain it right here. Okay, I'm going to take these two, and we'll just use these rectangles to represent one cup right here. I'm going to cut those rectangles in half, so then I have a half a cup. So here is one out of two parts here, so it's one half right here. Okay, then I'm going to take them and cut them into fourths. So there's four equal spots right here. So this is one-fourth, this is two-fourth, this is three-fourth, this is four-fourth right here. Okay, so here's what Stacy needs. She needs three-fourths right here. So what I'm going to do is cut these fourths into halves again and cut this in half and this in half and this in half and this in half. And that's going to cut me into eights right there. Okay, so here's Stacy's three-fourths of a cup. So this three-fourths lines up with, over here, 6 eighths right here. This is 1 8 2 8 3 8 This is 4 eighths, which is 1 half, you guys. 5 eighths and 6 eighths is what lines up right there, okay? So uh, 3 fourths equals 6 eighths of a cup. And to answer this question right here, an eighth size cup is smaller. Here's an eighth size cup right here. It's smaller than a fourth size cup. In fact, it's half as small, okay? So she needs to make a 6 eighths cup to make a 4 eighths cup. All right, so um, so you need uh, how many eighth size parts to make three fourth size parts? I need six of them, okay? So I need to make three fourths of them. I need six eight size parts, okay? All right, uh, and how did you know how many eight size parts you need to make one fourth size part? Okay, well, here's one fourth size part right here. That's going to equal two of the eight size parts. So I need two of them, okay? So uh, there you go. I have a nice picture that Sharon's at right there. So I need two eight size parts to make one fourth size part, okay? All right, so note uh, three fourths equals six eighths. Well, it's equal to six eighths because I multiplied both the top and bottom by the same number. If you do the same number, then it's going to be equal. But you got to do it on top and on bottom, except zero. I'll explain zero in a little bit, you guys. You can't multiply top and bottom by zero, and I'll show you in a little while. But anything else you can, and it, it always equals. Okay, so example, right? Four fractions that are equivalent to one half, okay? So here's a half right here, one out of two. They're both equal, so this is one half right here. All right, one half is equal to two fourths. See, if I divide them up into four equal spots, this one half lines up with the one, two, fourths, two out of four. This two out of four lines up to, I'm going to cut them in half again, make eight of them. So it lines up with four out of eight. So four out of eight equals two out of four equals one out of two. Now I think I have enough room. I'm going to cut these rectangles in half again. And instead of uh, eight rectangles, there's going to be 16 rectangles. And so the halfway point, if I counted them, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight. There's eight out of 16 rectangles right there, okay? And if you just notice, I just keep multiplying the top and bottom by 2. So 8 times 2, 16 times 2, it also will equal 16 out of 32. So 1 half equals 2 fourths equals 4 eighths equals 8 sixteenths equals 16 30 seconds. And this dot, dot, dot just means it keeps going on forever and ever and ever. And I can multiply it by anything. I don't have to keep multiplying by 2. I can multiply it by 3 as long as I do the top and the bottom. 1 times 3 is 3. 2 times 3 is 6. So 1 half also equals uh, 3 6. I can take 1 half and multiply it by 7. Uh, as long as I do 7 over 7, 1 times 7 over 2 times 7, I get 7 over 14. Okay? 
Uh, let's see, so let's complete this guy right here. Okay, now, if you can see, this is a six-sided figure right here. Kind of looks like a cube. I'm going to stay away from it. We're not looking at the cube part. We're looking at the six-sided figure. One, two, three, four, five, six. You see the outside six pieces? Okay, and do you see how I have two of the three equal spots shaded right here? So this part equals two-thirds. This part is the same thing, except I cut them up even uh, I cut them up into uh, six equal pieces here, so four of them are shaded here, so it also equals four six. Okay, so two thirds equals four six. Okay, uh, and notice I just multiplied times uh, two on both of those, and so as long as you multiply by the same number, then it's going to be equal. That's why they're called equivalent fractions. Okay, so here's what I said. Can you multiply the numerator and denominator by, by zero? And so explain. Okay, and I'm going to say you never, ever, ever can put zero in a denominator of a fraction, you guys. So let me show you by an example. Let's just take one half for an example, okay? And let's pretend like I multiply it by zero over zero. If I take one half and do zero over zero, well, I get one times zero, which is zero, over two times zero, which is zero. And zero over zero does not equal one half. Like if I multiplied it by two over two, I'd get, I'd get two over four. Uh, and 2 over 4 does equal 1 half, but 1 half does not equal 0 over 0. When you guys get later on into your high school math, into calculus and stuff, you'll find out that 0 over 0 is an undefined number. You can't do that. All right, okay, I hope that helps you guys. Take care.